good afternoon everybody today i am going to deliver my talk and title scientific misconduct plagiarism fabrication and falsification here we see the diagram today my main topic is to discuss plagiarism fabrication and falsification here we see the learning goal in order to this our learning goal we have to understand the following issues regarding scientific misconduct <clears throat> number 1 is the plagiarism number 2 fabrication number 3 falsification here you see the learning objects being first the definition implications and the solution the ways for curbing scientific misconduct what is this the development of health and human services defines this as misconduct as fabrication falsification or plagiarism in proposing performing or revealing research results number 1 is the fabrication what is this what is the definition fabrication is for making up results and recording or reporting them number 2 falsification it is the manipulation of research materials equipment or processes or changing or omitting results such that the research is not accurately represented in the report Number three, plagiarism. It is the appropriation of another ideas, processes, results, or works without giving proper credit. The scientific discovery. What is this? How common is? this has been conducted it is found that on average about 2% of the scientists admitted to have fabricated falsified or modified data or results at least one is yes for of this conduct any standard how do you report scientific misconduct if not a good reporting to the research integrity office of your university write them an anonymous letter or email unfortunately it is very risky to write under your own name here is a question is research misconduct a crime only the serious cases of research misconduct 
should be considered as thought and hence criminalized. That is, many criminal punishment such as fines or incarceration all are serious cases and nothing but serious cases. Fabrication, falsification or privacy should be far candidate to be considered as fault. Now I am going to discuss fabrications. Already I define making up data or results or recording and reporting them. Here we see the picture, here we see center for data fabrication, make up, here is a make up, you see the picture, nice facilities, it is frank. No, for nothing here. Yeah. So, if you want to know in details, go to the following link. Now, fabrications. What is this? Fabrications involves unauthorized creation, alteration, or reporting of information in an academic activity. Examples of fabrications or falsification include the following. Artificially creating data when it, when it should be collected from an actual experiment. How can you prevent fabrications? So what is the remedial measure? Develop and maintain guidelines and high standard for accuracy in the fact you report. Take the responsibility for every fact. Confirm every fact yourself with what you have observed. You have heard in interviews with credible sources and what you have learned in authentic documents. Attribute the fact to your sources. Now, number two is the falsification. Manipulating research material, equipment or processes, or changing or omitting data or results such that the research is not accurately presented in the research record. Now, which is, which is an example of falsification in research? Example of falsification include presenting false transcript or references in application for the program. Submitting work which is not your own or was written by someone else. Here is an example of falsification. Here you see the uh, publications and here also uh, title and this is one of the examples of the falsifications. Now plagiarisms very important, is very, uh, very important in research field. What is this? Appropriations of another person's data, idea, processes, results of works without giving the appropriate credit. Perhaps the simplest way to detect privacies is using computer aided software such as Carnegie. In general, 20% of the severity index is deemed acceptable. 
the permission is the the act of presenting others or or ideas as your own. So plagiarism is a very uh, important thing in research, and if you want to submit your thesis, that plagiarism should be checked. And already I mentioned. Uh, 20 persons of the similarity index is deemed acceptable. So that is the uh, 20 persons, uh, less than 20 persons, it is acceptable for for submitting the thesis, um, um, and that should be checked by these types of software. What is plagiarism thesis? Plagiarism is the unethical practice of using words. Or ideas, either plant or accidental, of another author, researcher, or your own previous work, without proper acknowledgement, who is causing paper distractions. So uh, now we will see the paper distraction. Uh, In different institute, these are the students. It's very really important, and um, this is uh, the, this is due to happen uh, happening uh, for plagiarisms. Why should a paper be rejected? What is the reasons? Why a paper can be rejected? A research paper retraction by an academic journal sends a clear message that the validity of the paper has been brought into question. The fellow researchers who may be citing that paper or even worse, moving forward with research based on the retracted study. And thus may help to revisit their research plan, which could lead to extensive loss of time and effort. Since the paper in question will be retracted from print and online version of a journal and any associated databases, it should be logical to assume that. The journal's editor or editorial board would make the decision to retract. But this is not always the case. Tracking the reasons for a paper retraction can lead to different members involved in academic publishing. It could be the authors or co-authors retracting the study. Journals editors issue a retraction after complaints from readers. Editor in chief issues retractions because of extensive issues reported in the studies or journal reports. Issuing retraction because of several studies coming into question and thus affecting the. The reputation of the journal itself. Cause of retraction. What is the reason behind it? As the retractions of an article will remain on record with the journal database, it has the potential to do long-term damage to researchers or a journal's reputation. For these reasons. The grounds for retraction should be very clear, especially for distinguishing between the acceptable human error and intentional academic misconduct. Now, what is human error? Data collections of classification errors, problematic statistical analysis, and information. That is unfairable under fair rule. Intentional academic misconduct, simultaneous submission to multiple journals, 
conflicts of interest, fabrications or manipulation of data, failure to comply with research protocols, parallelism. So now, ways to avoid parallelism in the research paper. How? How can we avoid the parallelism in a research article? Number one, understand the context. Don't copy paste the text already from the reference paper. Instead, restate the idea in your own words. Number two, quote. Use quotes to indicate that the text has been taken from another paper. The quotes should be exactly the way. They appear in the paper you take the form. Identify what does and does not need to be cited. Any words or ideas that are not your own but taken from another paper need to be cited. Number four, manage your citation. Number five, use privacy status. You can use various privacy detection tools such as Identicate or ETVLAS. Other types of scientific misconduct are as follows. Number one, misappropriation of ideas. Number two, plagiarism. Number three, self plagiarism. Number four, improperity of author authorship. Number five, failure to comply with legislative and regulatory requirements. Number six, violation of generally accepted research practice. Number seven, falsification of data. Number eight, Failure to support validations of your research. Number nine, failure to respond to known cases of unsuccessful validation attempts. Number ten, inappropriate behavior in relation to suspected misconduct. Now, very really important things. Why does misconduct happen? What is the reason behind it? Publish or perish pressure from funding sources, number one. Number two, desire to get ahead. Number three, personal problems. Number four, character issues. Number five, cultural differences. How is misconduct identified? Number one, suspected and reported by a colleague. Number two, failure to confirm recent results by own lab or others. This is the topic I I have discussed today. Finally, thank you all.